Okay, so we are logging in to Alfresco Share, and this is the global dashboard, and we can see that we have a collection of sites here. One of them is called Portland Photo Contest. And within this, I've got uh, some members that belong to the site. I have a list of modified documents and an activity stream. And Alfresco Share supports things like following uh, different users and uh, things like that. But uh, within a site, you can have these different tools. And um, in my case, I have a document library that I've named Photos. And within that is just a collection of folders. And folders can contain folders and folders can contain files and um, so within this document library I have folders for different parts of Portland and we'll be having people submit um, photos and then Alfresco is going to sort those into the folder that they belong to so what's cool about Alfresco is there's a lot of different ways to get content into the repository one of them is email so every folder in the repository has an email address and in this case I've given the submissions folder an alias called contest and so I'm writing an email to contest and I'm selecting a couple of pictures to add to the email so let's just pick uh, the full sale picture and the Portlandia picture and we'll send that from test user 1 so that's the first email. Let's send another email from a different user. This one will be uh, test user 2. And uh, same kind of deal. It's We're going to send it to the same folder within Alfresco called contest. And we'll give it the uh, uh, some text here and uh, some attachments. Now, um, so Alfresco is listening uh, on SMTP for the email. And when it gets these emails, it will save the attachments as well as the email body. Now what I've done is I've created a rule on that submissions folder that will inspect the pictures and then um, sort them appropriately. So let's see what happened. So if we come back over here to Alfresco and we look in the Columbia uh, folder we have the full sale brewery picture um, and that's in the Columbia River Gorge area so that's why it's there. We have downtown and we have uh, the Mount Hood area. So what's what's going on here is that um, these pictures have latitude and longitude information on them and Alfresco is extracting all of the EXIF uh, data from the image automatically. That's just out-of-the-box functionality and it's pulling the latitude and longitude off of the picture and storing it as uh, properties on the um, on the object and then you can also see that I'm grabbing the uh, email address of the person who sent this picture in and I'm stamping that into the author uh, property on the object as well so every attachment that got sent in from a particular user will have that user's email address if we go look at the full sale brewery picture and scroll down we'll see this has a different email address there it is tuser1 so that's who sent that picture in Okay, so that's kind of cool, um, but uh, what if now that we have the latitude longitude, we ought to be able to visualize that information. Um, so there's an add-on in uh, add-ons.alfresco.com called Site Geotagged Content, which is a little dashlet that we can add to our dashboard. And when we do that, it will look around for any documents that have latitude longitude on them and then put them on a map. So now uh, in our contest site we can actually see a map of uh, of all the different pictures and we can um, click the thumbnail and uh, go find that uh, that picture in the document library so that's a nice little uh, that's a nice little feature and that that dashlet is if you go to um, add-ons.alfresco.com and do a search for geographic I think you will probably find it and the source code is available in um, in Google code. Alright so let's go see how this rule works that sorts uh, sorts the objects the files that come in. So you can see I've got a rule set up on the submissions folder and I, I do three things. I extract the metadata then I sort by geography and then I sort and then I set the sender uh, on every object 
and you can see here for the sort by geo rule that um, we're just checking to see if the geographic aspect is set and then we're running a uh, some server-side JavaScript called sort by geography .js. and if we want to go look at that JavaScript we can this is another little add-on that's really cool called the JavaScript console also available from add-ons um, if I go do a load script and select the uh, sort by geography it's not you know a complex script by any stretch all it's doing is uh, grabbing the latitude and longitude from the document and then it's calling a little function called get region and get region for every document uh, that it gets is going to just determine um, what is the name of the region that that picture belongs to and um, so it's looking here and comparing to some objects that I have in the repository called geographic region and it's looking to see whether the um, latitude longitude falls within those parameters or not and if it does it returns that region name and then um, we move the, um, uh, the the file to that region the folder that has the re same name as the region now I could have hard-coded the latitude and longitude into my script but um, that seems a little lame so instead I used uh, alfresco data lists and uh, I created a new data list called contest regions and um, these are just um, arbitrary contentless objects that contain the name of a region and then uh, basically a rectangle upper left and lower right um, latitude longitude bounds and the script just looks looks uh, looks there to find that. What's cool is that scripts uh, and rules, these rules will work no matter how the content gets into the repository. So I'm, I emailed it a second ago, but if I if I do a drag and drop, um, then that works. Or if I FTP, or if I web dav, or if I use CMIS, um, these should all be able to fire that uh, that rule. So you can see the drag and the drop. I added some more photos, and then I came in to these folders and the uh, the files are there. Um, another cool thing that rules can do, this is another simple thing, is a common thing that people do, is they'll, they will they will convert Office documents to PDF. So um, if I were to go into my templates folder and pull up uh, my release form here and tell Alfresco I want to edit this offline, it will launch Word and I can then make a change to this form. I'll just do something simple. I'll just change the uh, the name and the email here to bold and then we will save that. Oh, it looks like uh, looks like Word is spell checking all of my my fake content which is fine. Um, save the document and now we can uh, we can check that back in. So uh, here we go. We'll just uh, check in that copy that we just edited locally. And click upload. And now I could have put a comment in there, but you're probably tired of watching me type. All right, so now we have a new version. Now making an update to that form triggered a rule that created a PDF, and we stuck that PDF in the public folder. So now. Um, here's the PDF version of that file and it's got the bold name and email in the in the file so you know anytime you want to convert from one format to another and you want to have that happen automatically that's a common thing to do with a rule now this is all great for the web app but what if we were using the mobile app so uh, this is our open source uh, iOS app I can come in here go into the local server pop open that Portland photo contest site uh, go into that Columbia folder and here is the uh, here are the two pictures I can um, do a lot of the functionality that you would expect like I can do a like uh, on the on a on an image or a document I can come in here and uh, create a new comment on an image or a document um, and you know, not you can't do everything in the mobile app that you can do in the share client, but you can you can do a lot. So um, so now I've made a comment. Um, you can also integrate with s different apps that are on your iPad. So, for example, I have an app called PDF Expert on my iPad. So what if we went into that PDF and we do an open in PDF Expert, and then it pops in 
PDF expert and now I could do work on that PDF. Maybe I want to sign it, for example. Um, so I grab the, the pen and I grab my handy dandy Alfresco iPad stylus and uh, give it a little signature here. And then I can open this back up in Alfresco and uh, upload it to a folder. I'll just click open in, flatten copy, and you should find Alfresco in the list. Click that, and now I just need to uh, go find a folder to stick it in. There's the there's the PDF. It's got my signature on it. And let's see. Yeah, we'll just put it back in the uh, just put it back in the Columbia folder here. So click that, do an upload, choose document, and pick that uh, PDF that just came from PDF Expert. I could add tags and stuff like that, but we'll just we'll just upload it. So there it goes, back into the mobile app. So, you know, you can do a lot with the mobile app. That's just a, a brief look. And then the last thing to show is just, uh, because we use an open API based on CMIS, here's a little, you know, ugly uh, app that I wrote um, that is getting to that same site. So we're going into the Columbia folder and we go to that uh, PDF and click the download link and up pops the uh, up pops the PDF. So that's it. Just a quick demo, uh, touching very just skimming the surface of what Alfresco can do, but it shows uh, I think some really cool features that sort of run the gamut from cool stuff you can do in the Share Web app to stuff with our mobile app to um, you know things that you can do in a custom application.